we are Rob and Ali, sharing with you our passion of all things cruise and travel. So you've just booked your cruise and uh, you're looking at all the, uh, all the activities and things you need to do. So what happens then about checking in and getting your tickets and all that kind of stuff? What happens, Rob? How does that happen? Well, it... Okay, so it's, it's a little bit different depending on whether you book directly or whether you book through a travel agent. If you book through a travel agent, then they'll generally take care of a lot of the work for you and send you through your, your pack. But if you book direct, there's a little bit more work that you might need to do yourself. So your tickets will come from either your tickets will come from either the cruise company or they'll come from your travel agent. But when it comes to checking in and completing all your paperwork and getting what you need to get on the ship, that's where you're going to have to do a lot of the legwork ah, yourself. Okay. Yeah. Now, now um, oh, what I would say just before we even get to that stage is, I highly recommend as soon as you've booked your trip, look at the travel insurance because once you've committed, once you've paid some money, if you have to cancel for any reason, you could end up losing anything from just your deposit to the entire cost of your cruise, depending. On, on what happens and of course if you get ill or I'm not gonna this isn't a video about insurance but what I would say is generally speaking con consider seriously consider getting the insurance in as soon as possible after you booked your cruise yes because some cruises the ship will not actually let you on board without certain types of insurance so it's crucial that you it check is, that it is. now it's yeah just to clarify that that's not that's not the actual cruise lines necessarily it's dependent upon where you're going at the moment in Australia, if you're traveling to New Caledonia or Fiji, you are required to have travel insurance with cruise cover and with COVID cover. If you don't have that insurance with cruise cover and COVID cover to cover the islands where you're going, there's a good chance that the cruise lines will not let you actually on the ship. And, and recently, when we went on cruises recently, they check every single person. It's in fact, it's become more of a check than the COVID. Yes. <laughs> but um, anyway, that, that aside, as I say, it's not a video about insurance. So most cruise lines will have, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk as if you have I've done this directly here. Yes. Um, although I think from the, if you book to a travel agent, you still, we still need to actually do this ourselves anyway. So most cruise companies will have uh, an app or a website which you check in. They've got different names. Um, P and O so is called Cruise I, Control. Do we do that when I book, or when, when would I do that? Some of it you can do as soon as you're booked, but you can't actually complete that process until a period of. It varies between the cruise lines, but it could be anything 30 days, 60 days okay. before. It depends on what it is. And when you do that completion, that's when you print your boarding passes and when you print your luggage tags. Okay, so you, you hop onto the website or you hop onto the app and there is um, there, there will be some information that you need to fill out there, personal details, um, name, address. You will need to fill out your identification details, so that's passport if you're going on an international um, cruise or, um, or just local um, domestic ID, like a driving license, for example, if you're just not leaving, if, you, if, you're, just, if you're not leaving the country. Um, you'll have oh, and they also give you the opportunity to say about dietary requirements. I remember yes. this one because of, of my dietary requirements. <laughs> but yes, that's that's the opportunity then. It is. It is. Um, that's um, <coughs> you can put dietary preferences in there, but they also uh, the, the class generally generally speaking they'll class the dietary requirements along with the medical. So if you've got any medical conditions you need to disclose. Um, put those on there and, uh, and any dietary so if you have any allergies for example um, that way the cruise line knows um, what to expect and what not to mm. give you it is actually recorded on your file it's not just um, it's not just a question of putting it on there for preference um, I know a few years ago I was traveling with somebody who had allergies they put it on there and they, um, they yeah the ship actually um, refused to refused to serve refused them to serve. some items <laughs> absolutely <yeah. laughs> even though they then wanted them he just went no <laughs> you put down that you've got an allergy yeah they wouldn't take the risk yeah that's true um, yeah. so other things you'll need to put on there are emergency contact details and uh, and generally speaking these days you'll need to upload a photograph now this does not need to be a passport photograph. You can, you can smile. <laughs> smile. The photograph is merely for identification purposes. It will be attached to your cruise card, um, and it saves some time at the uh, on it. Not a lot. It saves a little bit of time during the actual um, embarkation process. Um, Every time you get something from the bar, 
this is the, the, the um, when they put the card through, this is the photograph they see on their till, isn't it, of you? Yeah, they, ch they check that so, it's you. So, yeah, you can uh, have a nice one. So that's a bit of a safeguard, actually. So if somebody loses their, if you lose your card and somebody finds it, they can't use it and go and sort of do damage at the bar because they'll mm -hmm. immediately say that it's not the same person. So that is, um, so you fill out all those details, you'll have to make a declaration at the moment, you'll have to make a declaration with regard to your COVID status, your vaccination status, that may change, so watch the space on that one. Um, that is, I think, pretty much about pretty it much as far as that, until it comes time, and it will tell you at what stage you can do this, till it comes time to print in your boarding pass and your luggage labels, okay couple of things to point out here. When you print your boarding pass, you will be asked to select a boarding time. Now, the early times always go quick. Mm. So keep an eye on that date and, and pretty much as soon as that date comes, if you're wanting an early boarding, um, hop online and make sure you just secure that early boarding time. Yes. Yeah. And then, then once you've, you've done that, you can print your boarding passes and print your luggage labels. Um, make sure you print enough luggage labels for all of your checked in baggage um, or you can just print one and photocopy, whatever, but you need one of those labels on each of your checked in baggage. Now, if you don't have a printer, if you don't want to print, yeah. for whatever reason you aren't able to print that off, you can get them done at the port. There is, There will be people there waiting to print it, not print out, they write your, yes, uh, your luggage yes. labels yeah, and pass, fasten them to your bags. But just be aware that if there are a few people um, in that queue, it could add a little bit more time on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's Do you know, just, well, make, just make provision for it in the time that you're arriving, is what, what I'm saying. What we found is, so this is what we do. So this is just a tip for you if you wanted to do this. We take a picture or an on-screen picture or an actual photograph of things like driving licenses, passports, insurance. Mm -hmm. We take a copy of all that. Put it in a folder in the fo in your photographs, in your photo gallery. It means everything is there together. Um, even your emergency contacts, if you, if you just need something in an emergency. So it's all there in one place. Mm. But then we print everything off. Now we're lucky enough, we've got a printer at home. If you don't, you can just go to somewhere like we've said, Kmart, um, sort of Target, Officeworks, even the post office will do it. And... You don't need to download it onto a little memory card and things the way you used to. It's now done by Bluetooth. So it's just on your phone, go into one of these places. If you go to somewhere like Officeworks, they'll help you. There's somebody there to help you with it. Download everything and they just it just prints off. You just pay off. Yeah. And so you've got a nice little wad of paper and you've also got it on your phone. It's a bit old-fashioned to say it's on paper, but it's so much easier, isn't it? A checkout. Oh, check, well, check in, but yes. But check it's, in. <laughs> just, just a couple of points on that, though. Uh, they will not accept uh, photographed or printed copies of passports and any identification. You need the original documents for that. You need your passport, you need your driver license. But yes, we do. There's, there's two reasons why we print everything off. And the main things we print off are tickets, um, boarding pass, any things like COVID certificates, um, insurance, insurance certificates, yeah. um, anything that we are actually going to need at the check-in and we can't get on that ship without it. And there's, there's a couple of reasons we do this. Firstly, and, and we've seen this happen, is somebody's pulled the phone out of the pocket, let go of it, yeah. dropped the phone and it's dropped on the floor. Now, I don't know whether that phone was broken or not, but if you've got everything on your phone and your phone is broken because it's fallen out of your pocket, at the terminal, you've got no record, you can't show, and if you don't show those documents and you can't show those documents, you're not getting on the ship. The second part, the second reason we do this, and not only do we print them off, we actually give them to each member of the party, so yes, every, every yes. member of the party has, has a copy of their own little copy. Yeah, yeah. And the reason we do this is if there are a group of you, and it doesn't need to be a big group, it could just be four of you, and you are checking in, they may split you between booths. When you get to the, the terminal, you're, mm. alloc you're allocated to booths. It's just a long line of booths and they, they just process everybody and, and you go through. If you're allocated to separate booths and you've got one person has got all that documentation on their phone, <laughs> you, you're passing the phone back and forwards and you're trying to find out. And there's, but you can't find and, anything and not only like that. this. It's great for a backup, but you can't oh. find it, can you? Backwards and forwards with and, it. There you are. And the other thing is... Trying to make it bigger on the screen. They can only do one at once.
once because yeah. only one person can look at one document and look. Yeah. 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 So, so we printed out. Look, we, we, we do try to save the environment and try and limit printing as much as possible, but some things are just too risky. It's um, just easier. And so we, we, we do that. So that's why we print out all those documents and we take them with us to the terminal. Let's rewind a bit. So let's rewind to 24 hours before we board. Now this is just for now. Things may change as we say in the future, but for now you still need a rat test, which is the old COVID test that you can do. You could do at home. I think most people do them at home. You can go to one of the... Um, the special places that still do them, but why bother? The PCR. Yeah. yeah. yeah you, look, don't, you don't need to get an official test, really, is what we're saying. The rat tests are I think most people. Sufficient. I think most people do rats these days because they're so easy and, and cheaper. And, uh, and yeah. yeah. So that, that's as it stands at the moment. 24 hours before, you need a positive. Uh, you need a negative. You don't get a positive. You need no. a negative. <laughs> you need a negative result. And you need to take a copy of that. Take a picture of that. So another copy. You need to take a picture of that with next to a government issued ID and verification of time and date. So we use another phone for that. Put it. Put all three uh, items together: the, the test, the ID, and the phone. And take a picture of that. And we also print that out as yeah, well. Yeah. So we do the driving yeah. license, the phone, and the rest. Yeah. Like I say, things may change, but as it stands at the moment, at the time of making a video, that it's is nice what is required. And yes. again, we take we take prints of it just in case because if you've got it on your phone and something happens to your phone you haven't got that proof anymore okay so we're all set to go yeah. so we've got to the exciting day this is the exciting bit this is the day of your cruise so of course you check your paperwork you make sure you've got your parking or whatever or all your travel arrangements if you're flying you need all that separate documentation as well all in order off you go, and you arrive at the cruise terminal. Uh, yes. <laughs> what next? So when you've arrived at the cruise terminal, there will be a baggage drop. Um, this is where you put your um, your checked in baggage, which will be taken straight to your cabin. You'll not see it after you check it in, but it is the first part of the process. So it's before you even go into the terminal, before you do anything else. If you've got your luggage labels on, that's fine. If you haven't, queue up, get your luggage labels put on, and take it away. But do not put any of your travel documents in your checked-in luggage. We really recommend if you've got any medications that you depend on, you do not put in your checked-in luggage. Mm. Keep those in your hand luggage. We have known cases go astray. We have known yeah. cases that... that or bags been... are just... Um, they're, they're held back because they've got maybe some, something in them that... Um, they want to check out with you yeah. and they can be held for a few hours they can that medication I'm, but I'm thinking more of ones that don't actually just, make it onto yes. the ship because <laughs> yes. if, if, if you're on a ship you can't just nip down to the local we well, can nip to the medical centre but it's it's not the same as nipping down to the doctors and the pharmacy if there are medications you depend on keep them in your bag because it's going to be very very tricky yeah. and very costly to get yeah. The so. other thing is, you cannot take um, it's it's water and liquids and things. I had a um, I had a flask of coffee actually, and I wasn't allowed to take that through. I had to empty that down the sink, um, which was very disappointed about. <laughs> this lovely, lovely hot coffee that I'd got and poured it into the flask. Yeah. So you can't take liquids, and you've got a little bit of a queue before you um, actually get through. By the time you've done security and checking. Mm. Um, so if you've got something like that, like a flask um, or, a, or a water bottle, either put that in your checked in luggage or you'll have to just empty it out so it's empty. Yeah, I'm not sure you can put it in checked in luggage, but anyway. Um, so your luggage will be scanned. Do not be tempted to take any items that you cannot take and put them in your luggage because it, it will be scanned. And, and as you said before, it can get held up. Yes. Uh, I know we put some cans of soft drink in the um, the case once by mistake, never even thought about it. Of course, it went through on the scanner. They could see the... Um, uh, that it was cans, yeah, but actually, they wanted they, And they, they will not... check out what they were. They won't check it without you being there, so yes. you have to go down, and then you have to see them, and yeah. of course, that's oh, hours later. It was it, a hassle. It is a hassle. Yeah, anyway, so, so you checked your bags in, away they go, off they go, and you go into the terminal. Um, you'll generally have to queue up, I guess, um, but you will then go to one of the booths that we were talking about earlier. A booth sounds like it's like a voting booth, but it, it is actually just a straight line desk. It on is most of pretty them. much like a voting booth, but without the petitions between yes. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, they're really quick, they're really efficient, but if you've got all your documentation there to hand, um, which will be your ticket, your boarding pass, 
your identification, um, your insurance if that's necessary, your COVID vaccination as it stands at the moment, your COVID RAP negative or PCR negative as it stands at the moment. Um, We've always found the, the, the check-in excellent. Oh, it's very good, yeah. It, uh, they're so friendly and they're very yeah, accommodating. Very I mean, great. they have to be efficient and they have to be thorough. Um, but they've, they've yeah, yeah no, they, they've always yeah. been delightful. If your photograph was not adequate for their purposes, <laughs> they will take a little photograph of you. Yes, we say you can smile, but I don't think they appreciate dark sunglasses and a uh, <laughs> I know, hat. you have to remove your hat and sunglasses and everything yes. has to be faced because they, they will... This is your identification. Once you get on the ship, it is basically um, a replacement for your passport. So when you're getting when you're getting yes. off and, and on yes, at any stops, it's so it's. Like I said it doesn't need to be a passport photograph, but they need to be able to identify you from it. So they will do that. That's a that's a quick process. It, it generally takes longer to queue up for that than it actually takes to do it. As I said, mm. sometimes they may split you if you're a group um, just to get you all through quicker, and then off you go to security. Now, security is is pretty much the same as what you get if you if you're flying. If you go through an airport, yeah. it's pretty much the same process. You have to take out um, all your electronics, your laptops, yeah. computers, that kind of thing. The phone, you have to put your phone in. Um, sometimes they make you take off the big watches. Those kind of big electronic watches, mm. they have to come off. If you've got very heavy jewellery. Um, or a lot of bling on the belts and shoes, you may have to take those off as well. You know, you have to go through the, yeah. the little arch um, and then everything goes through on the belt. It so does. it's pretty much the same thing. All your hat and everything has to come off. Yep. Um, again, they're very thorough about this. All goes through the scanner as well. So. does take a little bit of time. Just, you know, yeah. just be patient. Yeah. It, it's uh, one of those things for your own safety. Yeah. It is, well, it's, it's, it is for your own safety, but it's also for uh, for them to be able to track whether some people are trying to take something on board that they're not supposed to take. Yes. So uh, yeah, a lot of cruisers will limit the amount of alcohol if they will allow you to take any alcohol. Um, if that's... that's what we say. We always check in. We always take... If, if you're allowed wine, or if you're allowed things like we take the non-alcoholic beers or the non-alcoholic cans, we carry that with us so you we have can to. show it you to them. You always have to take it in your hand luggage, yeah. We can show it to them, they see how much you've got, yeah. and you go through and it's all sweet. It's, it's all nice yeah. and easy. Yeah. So that's, you, you're through security now, you've, you've got yourself dressed again. After yes, <laughs> so the thing that most people find really awkward is you've had all this paperwork out and you've had everything. Normally what you'd say is, once you've done that, you put everything away. So took everything away nicely and put it away properly in your bag so it's not all hanging out, it's not all in bits and pockets. Put it away. Um, unless your cruise is leaving Australia. And then you will have to go through passport after you have been through security. You actually, I think you do need some, um, <coughs> I can't remember which document you need, but you, you boarding might. Boarding pass. You, you will, yeah, you'll boarding need your, pass. That's right, boarding pass. You will need your boarding pass again, yeah. And that's what we yeah. said. Sometimes you feel like you've got everything out and it's like you need to put everything away uh, back in its place. Because right. um, people have, they, they bring things out and their passport goes They've dropped it on the floor, or ideas dropped. So just take a little bit of time. Um, but but you're right. International cruisers, you will need your passport. You need to go through passport control again. Same as if you were leaving the country by any other method, aeroplane, um, aeroplane really. But it's um, yeah. You, you need your um, passport, and you will be checked by the immigration, and they will. And then that's do what they do. It. <laughs> Off you go through. You go normally down a tunnel. It depends actually which cruise you're going on. You, can, uh, yeah, you can't whatever. you can't generalise on how but you go. Or normally where you go. But yes, yeah. that, you that's go. do you free then to just go straight onto the ship? And that's that's is it. The only other thing I would mention is, and and I'm, I'm just mentioning it in this video is, generally speaking, you there is a um, there is a process called the TRS or the Tourist Refund Scheme. Um, we might do another video on this, uh, but, yes. but it's basically it's a mechanism in which if you have purchased something within 60 days of travel and you're taking it with you and bring it back into the country, you can reclaim the GST on that, but you need to be aware that it will form part of your duty-free allowance for goods coming back into the country. So if you're not intending on bringing anything back in, um, other than what you take out with you, 
and you've bought, say, a new camera or something like that, or a new laptop that you're taking with you this within 60 bought. days this, so this is in the country. In Australia, yeah, it's yeah. what you've bought here in preparation for your trip, and then you take it with you, you can claim the GST back on it. We've forgotten to do it it's hmm. so many times, but actually, you know, it, it's um, it's 10% off your purchase, really, isn't Well, it? up to a certain degree. I think you can bring in $900 Australian of goods, so we're 10%, so yeah, there's $90 there, potentially, that's um, that you could reclaim. Yeah, why not? Those. Why not? So, as I said, that's, that's the, the, there are a yeah. few other things that, that go along with that, and this video isn't intended to do that, but just mention it so that you're aware, and maybe check out that if you have got something and you're thinking it may, may be a benefit to you. Now, one of the things, just, just to finally wrap this up, is once you then get on board the ship, it's a really strange feeling because although there are people there to greet you and they go, welcome, you suddenly feel that you, you just arrive in this huge sort of oasis of a ship. And it doesn't matter how many times we do it, we always kind of go, right, what next, right. What do we do? What should we do first? Even though we know exactly what we want to do first. You just feel a little bit strange. Um, however, there are lots of people there to help you on your way. They've all got their, their kind of little uniforms and things on and their badges. Um, but essentially, really, the first thing that you want to do is go off and find your room. And that's it. You'll have your room number. You make a good, you make a good point, and I did, did mention it. You've, you've checked your luggage in, you've seen it however long ago it was, and you're wondering when you're going to see it again. Your, your luggage, your checked in luggage, will be delivered to your cabin by the, the, um, the crew there. So they will, what time that's going to be, who knows. But they're generally fairly quick, and it, they generally get them to you as quick as possible because they've got other things to get on with. Could be an hour or two. Yeah. And be, these yeah. days, or it could be there by the time you get on. It depends on, um, yeah. on how quickly you got on. Anyway. We have another video about what to do once you arrive, first day, how to check out your cabin, how Absolutely. to make the most of that first day. Yes. So check that one check out. Check that one out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough for us now. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like. Please and subscribe, subscribe, please. Yes, <laughs> please subscribe. We want to get these subscription, subscription? We want to get these subscribe numbers up, please. It helps so much. Rob puts such a lot of effort into the um, into the editing it's of these. It's all good fun. Yeah. But um, yes, please do. And if you want to see some more of our videos, hit the notification button. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Oh. We will see you in the next video. Oh, we hope you have a fabulous cruise if you have already booked one. And if you're thinking of it, just do it. You'll <laughs> love it. Okay. Take care. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye.